fam, it's RJ Young. I am not on a step mill. We interrupt our regularly scheduled ball programming because of, well, Trey Young. And the Sooners have just destroyed number three team in the country, Wichita State. But the, I mean, the, just, just look, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta reel this back for just a second, and I gotta clue you into just how big a deal this is. And I wrote down some notes that we need to discuss right off type. Yeah, see, St steel already in here. We too deep. True story. The Sooners came into this game one and seven all time during road games against top five teams in non-conference play. All right, you got to go all the way back to Michigan State when that wasn't true. In 2003, you got to go all the way back to 2003 again when OU beat a top three team in UConn. It's not a thing that we do. It's not something that you could expect to happen, especially when you take into account they didn't really beat UConn on the road. I mean, it was neutral site. And yet they went into Wichita State, which is not a state, I checked, and beat the number three team in the country. Like this was, I looked at this game on the schedule. I looked at this game on schedule, and I was already going, oh, my God, please don't just let us get our heads handed to us. Like, I thought that when I first saw this game on the schedule back in October. I, I was really going, okay, well, this is just going to be that one where we get to kind of see if we're good. You know, if we kept it within, like, 15, I said, oh, Jackie, Merry Christmas. Thank you, Jackie. <laughs> Man, Jackie got in here. Look, Jackie been riding with me since, since, man, uh, <laughs> Jackie, I love you. I appreciate that. Uh, but I want I want to do this live because, well, this is not this is a big deal, and it's a big deal, and big deals deserve live streams, right? We got to talk about it together. Uh, it's just look, think about this for just a second. Lon Kruger comes in, and I and I I was covering Lon Kruger when he came to OU, and one of the coolest parts of being a beat writer at OU was covering the men's basketball team from the time that they were trash and they were garbage to watching him recruit a guy like Buddy Hield, a program changer, and take a team to the Final Four in five years. Like, it's just, just, I mean, Lon Kruger is a treasure. To be fair, most of the head coaches at OU are treasures, all right? Patty Gasso, softball coach, is a treasure. Lincoln Riley is a treasure. Lon Kruger is a treasure. Like, that to me is one of the legacies of Joe Constiglione. Is it's not just that he's great at finding good head coaches. He's f great at finding good head coaches you want your kids to play for and who can low-key win championships, win big games. And this is twice now that Lon Kruger has recruited a program changer to the University of Oklahoma. Both have been guards, right? We saw Buddy Hill. First, and now we've seen Trey Young, but the big difference here is Buddy Hill needed three years to become the kind of player that becomes a first-round draft pick. He needed three years to develop. I mean, many people don't don't remember this, but Lon Kruger had to teach Buddy Hill how to shoot the basketball. Like, he came in all, all just energy, just pure hustle. And matter of fact, we called him Energizer Buddy because you put him in and he would lock down your best score. That, that was his job as a freshman. And then they taught him to shoot. And, and, and not just they taught him to shoot, he was a gym rat. He stayed in the gym for hours. And so he, he had to work for it. He had to work for it in a way that I haven't seen a college basketball player work for it ever. I mean, just they took the tools that they had and they made it work. Now with a guy like Trey Young, who everybody wants, who, who everybody made a rush to go after. I'm talking about Kentucky. I'm talking about Kansas. I'm talking about Duke. Everybody wanted this kid. And for Lon Kruger to recruit this kid, to OU, keep him not just in the state, but in town. You know, he went to Norman North and say, look, this team is yours. This is your team. If you want it, it's yours. And Trey Young has not only said, it's my team. He, I mean, he set the tone. Like, one of the things that I love about this kid, beyond the averaging 28 points and nine assists a game, is that he makes everybody else just comfortable. It's not that they get to play their own game. You know, it's that he makes them comfortable. It's that they 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 feel okay playing their own game. They feel like they don't have to change who they are, like a Kadeem Latin who's defensive-minded, a Jemani McNeese, who, by the way, had an internet Hall of Fame block where he went up with two hands to grab the ball out of thin air. Like, that was my favorite play of the game. But he lets those guys just be who they are. 
You know, a guy like Brady Manick doesn't have to worry about leading the team and scoring because Trey's going to do that. And then Brady's like, oh, I got wide open shots. It's the Steph Curry effect. You know, you're so busy worried about Steph Curry that you look at a guy like Trey. I mean, you look at Steph Curry and you don't you forget about Klay Thompson. You forget about Draymond. You forget about uh, Iggy. You know, I think you're having that same effect at OU. Uh, okay, that's five minutes of me talking. I need to go through roll call because I can see people already in the chat and I appreciate it uh, because we're starting early. We don't use Let me see. Mississippi State. Let's see. So roll call right quick. If you're in, say what's up. Say hi. And we'll get to questions. And what you and questions, statements, comments. I've already seen a few I want to I wanna get to. Don, what's up? Mark, what's up? Michael, what's up? Norman! SS4, what's up? Goku in the house. Devin, what's up? Austin, what's up? Onikuno! Damon, what's good? Brent, what's good? Let me see. P-Dub, that's what's up. <laughs> I'm not saying that out loud, dog, but hi. Jay, what's up? Blinkin! Speaking of blinking, I'll get to that in a second. Tommy, what's good? Crankstar, what's good? Austin, what's good? So, I know that Jackie was in here already. Uh, Corey, what's good? Larry, what's good? Anybody else? Angry Sooner! That's what's up. That's what's up. All right. I see Andrew's in here. That's what's up. Team Ray! What's good, Ray? Steel! Steel was in here first, man. So, one of the things that I, I wanted to also get out there is that the Angry Sooner, Blink and Riley, myself, what's up, JD, uh, and Sooner Bomb have decided to, to create a Reddit community for OU fans. Uh, if you're familiar with Reddit, please head over to Sooner Republic. We're already there. We got a few discussion posts up, mostly related to football, but I'm sure there's going to be at least one related to basketball after today. So head over there if you haven't already. I know that Blinken had already said it, and I know other people, a lot of other people said it. Can we have a Naismith Award winner and a Heisman Trophy winner in the same year? Yes. <laughs> yes. A resounding yes. One, because we already got the Heisman locked up. 6 Savage went and did that for us. But others, because Trey Young is averaging 28 points and basically nine assists per game. What's up, Jared? 28-9. All right? Steph Curry is averaging 26-6. and six. And I know that Steph Curry plays professional basketball, and I know that Trey Young is a 19-year-old playing the Big 12. But I don't care, all right? That's how hype I am right now. Give me Trey, you keep Steph, and we'll go win. But here's the other thing. It's not just that he's averaging 28 points and he's leading the nation in scoring. It's that the next closest two dudes to lead the nation in scoring play at Niagara and Marshall. And 10 points to Gryffindor if you can tell me what conference Niagara plays in. Because that's how much people care about Niagara, right? To say nothing of Marshall, Okay. So not only do they play in trash conferences, but Trey Young is doing this against Oregon. He's doing this against Wichita State. He's doing this against USC. He's doing this against Arkansas. He's doing this against basketball programs. All right? He's doing this against the competition. All right? So, like, he <laughs> turned into page 394. I like that. So, I mean, check it. Anyone in the chat can catch the name of that subreddit. Yeah, it's Sooner Republic. Uh, I would appreciate it. Blink. Or uh, Angry Sooner, drop a link into the chat so that people can just go f uh, straight to Sooner Republic, check it out. Uh, let me see, what, what did you say, Blink? Trey Young leads in points per game, player efficiency rating, and points created per game. Basically means, if you want to score points, give the ball to Trey! And I'm also, I need to say this every time we do this, and I'm pressed, I'm going to have to say it every time we do it in the future. But no, I am not related to Trey Young. We just ha happen to have the last, you know, same last name. That's it, you know? Although I lived in Norman, he lived in Norman at the same time, so that's a kind of a cool coincidence. And it was really weird to cover Trey Young as a recruit because I would have to get all of those kinds of questions all the time. Like, hey, man, do you know Trey? And if so, can you, like, push him toward OU? Well, no, I don't know Trey. And two, I mean, hey, Jared, I appreciate that, fam. Jared, man, that's what's up. I like the hat. I like, I like the hat. It's a good look. Jared Gray in the house. Jared, follow me on Twitter. If you're on Twitter... Follow me on Twitter. Tell me that you're in the chat. I usually follow back people who are already here on YouTube because it's family, you know, and I follow family. Anyway, uh, yes, Sooners do rock. The other thing I want to point out about Trey Young in particular, right, and what he's been able to do for this program, you know, is, is just some of the small things. In eight games, you know, he's had three double-doubles, seven, oh, my God, angry. Angry. Angry with the five bucks. Dude! So, yes, there's a subreddit right there. So, Angry and Blink in particular kind of found me during football.
football season, uh, and I found them, and it's been really cool because, well, we like to create cool OU content. So if you see those guys on Twitter, give them a follow. I mean, they just, they're just awesome. They're awesome follows. They're awesome people. Um, and I'm really excited about this Sooner Republic deal that we got going on at Reddit. But back to Trey Young for just a second. So three double doubles, seven 20 plus point games. <laughs> they played nine. Well, it's eight now. So eight out of nine games, Trey Young has scored at least 20 points. What's up, Jake? Uh, you know, and then three 30 point games, and then one. 43-point game against Oregon, all right? So he scores all the points, and not only does he score all the points, he drops all the dimes. You know, he's averaging nine dimes a game. He had 10, I think, against Wichita State. And, and it, you know, again, it's Wichita State. It's the number three team in the country. It's not just, you know, uh, Northwest Central Arkansas State Tech. He's not doing this against trash teams. He's doing this against really, really good basketball teams, and they still don't know what to do with him. Like, <laughs> my man my man basically pulled up from Coffeeville for three and dropped it. Like, that's, you can't guard that. You, nobody guards that. That's not basketball anymore. That's another sport. I don't know what you're doing when you pull up past the half. Mark, what's the $5 super chat? That's what's up, fam. I appreciate that. That's what's up. Mark gave me a follow on Twitter, too. It's fun to go back and forth with him. Uh, you should check him out on Twitter because, again, OU fans love to chat with OU fans. We talk a lot of noise uh, up to the Rose Bowl about Georgia fans and whatnot, so it's fun. Uh, bro passes the ball to Mayfield, and I love it. Yeah, so that would that's the only thing that I would really like to see. I'd like to see – well, apparently, if you leave it to Lincoln Riley, Baker Mayfield really can't play basketball. Kellen, this is your first live stream. That's what's up. That's what's up. Glad you're here, man. Glad you made it. Uh, no, so, like, that's – uh, apparently Baker Mayfield can't play basketball. Apparently he's the kind of dude that you you send in just to foul the other guy. But he doesn't need to play basketball. Trey Young's got that covered. I bet Trey Young's not that great a football player. But that's the kind of the point, right? Is that you could have both of these guys that are really good. Jake, I appreciate the two dollar super chat, fam. I appreciate that. That's what's up. Ah, like see these super chats allow me to do this kind of stuff. Like I I wasn't gonna do it, and then I was like, oh yeah. I have, I have better internet now. I can do this. <laughs> you know, that's how this, that's how the live streaming thing, I had a live stream fail where it got so bad that I had to stop and make a video <laughs> and folks started donating to the Patreon. It's like, we need to get RG better internet. And that's how these things are allowed to happen now. So know that your super chats are going back to you. I, I feel like you need to know that. Uh, but again, with this Trey Young thing, Oklahoma was 26 and 36 against AP top 25 teams under Lon Kruger. Five and eight in the Kruger era when facing teams ranked in non-conference play. All right? So that's not regular. Like, we don't usually win these road games against top 25 teams. We're not, we don't really win games against top 25 teams. We got to beat the people we're supposed to beat and then kind of, it used to be sneak into the tournament with the odd you know, Final Four run with Buddy Hill. But even in that game, I mean, even that game, even that season, still didn't manage to beat Kansas at Allen Fieldhouse, which is kind of on my bucket list as an OU fan. I want to see my team beat the Jayhawks at Allen Fieldhouse. And you know what? I think we can do it this year. I, I think I think that's, that's in the cards this year. Not just because OU and Trey Young are so good, but because Kansas has been trash, fam. Kansas has been garbage. Like, I remember it was earlier last week. Bill Self put his team on blast, called, called them the softest team he's ever coached at Kansas. Man, I'd be so mad if I was a Kansas basketball player. You, would, I would never have it. I would never have it. Everything would be a duck point to my head coach. It'd be a block point to my head coach. <laughs> every pick pocket, every tray I drop, every dunk I throw down, I'd be pointing at Bill Self. But if they're that bad, and they're apparently that bad, and we're this good. There's nothing to say that we can't go up to Allen Fieldhouse and get a W, man. And if we can go up to Allen Fieldhouse and get a W, we can win a Big 12 title, right? And if we can big win a Big 12 regular season title, we're going to get good seating for the NCAA tournament, and now we, got to, we get to start talking about a run again. Like, I expected this to be a really just a bad basketball year, especially after last year, because that was obviously a rebuilding year. But, I mean... Help me out on sending some. Oh, Lance, hit the dollar sign, dog. There's a dollar sign right next to the 
the below the right something, there's a dollar sign. That's how you do that. OUB ball needs to play better in the second half. USC and Wichita State hung around and made me nervous. All right, so I want to take that on, Onikuno. So check it. I know that 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 they didn't look great in the stretch. I know that. I know that Trey Young went from having like one turnover for the first 17 minutes of the game to having like four. All right, I got you. Whoops. Blinken, Trey Young is first player, 25 points, 10 assists against an AP top 25 team since Johnny Flynn in 2009 against UConn. Man, you know you're pulling up some stats when you got to pull Johnny Flynn's name out of there. Man, I'll bet yeah, Timberwolves, they hated that draft where they took Ricky Rubio and Johnny Flynn in the same draft. But anyway, but to Onikuno's point, yeah, did they fade? Of course they faded. But they're young, number one. They're young. So I'm going to give them that. Number two, they didn't fade so much that they lost the game. I don't care how much you fade if you win. Like, you you can fade it to black if you win. I'll take it 85 to 83 against USC means you win. And not just you win, you went to USC and won. All right? That's the other thing that I think people need. What's up, Justin? I think people need to, to take into account about this, this OU team is they went to Oregon. Like, they went, they went and played against Oregon. And got a W away from home, right? They're not at home. Not at home to get a W. USC, not at home, get a W, right? Wichita State, hostile environment, get a W. You know, just means they can improve as the season progresses all the way to April. I mean, yes, I got you on the Kuna. I really do. But, but I, I just I just think that this, this is a good thing. This is an amazing thing. We should hold on to this. We should hold on to this for a long time and remember this. Come January, come February, come March, you know, that this team not only played well, it was gangbusters against the number three team in the country. I mean, Trey had 21 points. I see you were hitting that the Final Four. I, I get you that, Owen Kuno. Uh, Trey had 21 points in the first half. I mean, look, he looked like he was going to drop 40, and then he went like 2 of 10, I think it was, 2 of 10 from the field uh, in the second half. But here's the thing, though. Brady Manick was allowed to be himself. Because Trey Young was being himself. So Manic low key, had a career high for points. Matter of fact, I think they accounted for half of OU's points when it's called it's getting done. So Trey Young had 29. Manic had 21. That's that that's 40, dog. So they had 40 of OU's 91 points. That's that's ridiculous. Those two guys, you know, and they go 17 of that looks like 38. They go 17 of 38. Will Young be one and done? Man, I don't think so. I don't think so. I I, I think it's a possibility. If he wins an ace defense player of the year, he's gone. Uh, we're, we're all in agreement there. But there are things about his game that are that are ready for the NBA. But his frame, not so much. You know, I want him to just get a little bit bigger. Now, would he be a first round draft pick? Absolutely. He can go tomorrow if he wanted to. Like that. That's. But does he want to be the over the number one overall? I think that requires another year of just hitting the weights, man, getting his yo-yo on. But we'll see. Like, if, if he continues to do what he's doing and he finishes averaging 28-9, and nine, yeah, I wouldn't – I can't see him staying. Go get your money, fam. You know, go go get it. Go get your money, fam. I can't – I don't want to hold these kids back any longer than they have to be, especially since the way that college sports are held up, which is they don't get paid, they just get scholarships. And when they can see guys making millions of dollars – who have not as great a skill set as they do, I don't want to begrudge them that. I mean, that goes down to, to to football, to basketball, to baseball. If you can go get paid, I say go get paid. Because at the end of the day, we all want to, you know, get paid for doing what we love. You know? Like, in a perfect world, I would just get paid to be on YouTube. You know? But that I'm not, I'm not there. You know? I'm not that fortunate. Trey Young is fortunate enough to be able to go play in the NBA if he wants to next year. So if he thinks that there's no doubt, go, fam. Go. I want you to get bigger. That's the only thing. I want you to get bigger. I want you to be able to take those charges. I want you to be able to really grind through an 82-game regular season and into the playoffs and then go win NBA championships because I want I want OU alum to do well, you know? I want us to win championships in and out of sports. I mean, I sound like an NCAA commercial right now, so I'm going to shut up. Uh, anyway, other thing that I thought was interesting is that we got 26 points off the bench. You know, you got 26 points off points off the bench. And you had guys like McNeese holding their own. 
You know, like, I, I talked about that block. But at one point, Jemani McNeese had as many blocks, three, as he had points. You know? And he's the backup to Kadeem Latin. You know? Like, like they're, they're good pieces here. Cam Augusty is a great scorer. You know? Uh, Otimus is a great two-way player. Christian James, when he's got his head on straight, is a great two-way player. You know? <sighs> I just think that I just think that we're okay there. You know, Jordan Shepard was clutch in those final few minutes where he went four or five from the line. You know, like they're they're good pieces here. And I love it also because it's a it's a mostly a young team. You know, like a guy like Brady Manick, he's still got a chance to put on, you know, get some get some tribal tattoos and grow his hair out long and Spangler 2.0. Spangler with a three. You know, if that that was the one knock on Ryan Spangler is is his, his jump he wasn't a jump shooter. He wasn't a shooter. Brady Manick? Shooter. Shooter. Shooter in the house. Like I said, I like what Tom Crean actually had to say on the on the broadcast about shooters. Is they are not ready to shoot when they get the ball. They are ready to release when they get the ball. Because there's no wasted motion in what they're doing whatsoever. You know, there's no wasted motion. Also, in the chat, if you guys have kids with you, uh, or you're watching the chat with the kids, or they can just hear it, tell me their names. Shout them out. Uh, give me a signifier, like grandparent, parent, you know, uh, so that I'm not just saying somebody put you on blast. So I can say who put them on blast because I like really, I really like doing that stuff. It's it's fun. It's one of the reasons I do this. RJ, how much do you think OU will spank UGA by? I'm I'm going with like I, I've been thinking about this. Give me a shout out for my dude. Is it Tegan? Justin, is it Tegan? Am I saying that right? Is it Tegan or is it Tegan? You don't have to spell out the pronunciation. When I see the pronunciation, I will let. Let me see. Tay. Okay. Tay! Dad, put you on blast. <laughs> let me see. Where was it? Where was it? I missed one. Let me see. Where was it? Where was it? Ah! Tara! <laughs> Your dad put you on blast. <laughs> I'm going to say it again. Tegan! Dad put you on blast. <laughs> So I was asked about uh, OU UGA. I think, honestly, I think we're winning by two touchdowns, minimum two touchdowns. Because from let me see, Brent, shout out to my grandson Braden. Let me see, Braden, granddad, put you on blast. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Hey, Mama Savage in the house. That's what's up. Geneva. Dad, put you on blast. I like it. Uh, so I'm going, I'm going 38. I'm going 38 to 24. I'm going 38, 24. Is it, is it serene? Serene. Serene! Dad, put you on blast. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Uh, let me see. Mama says, think Young isn't really to go to the show this year. Because he's got scared of losing down the pike. Mama, mama just, mom, mama, my mama's savage. Like, I'm over here talking about how they held it together at the end of the game. And, you know, it's it good. My mama over here like, nah, nah, he puckered. He puckered. Mama, doggone, y'all see who raised me right there? Like, my mama take no prisoners. It's that, it's that Air Force Center. Let me see, uh, Baker's 29 and 0 when scoring over 35. Ah, uh, that's he's got a point there. He's got a point there. 38-17. Jared with the nice pick there. Hey mama, RJ put you on blast. Yes, yes, I did. Andrew says 9,000 to 0. Michael says 42-17. Yeah, we, we did picks earlier this week. Uh and I don't think I remember giving my pick, but my pick was 38. My pick is 38 to 24. Because Nick Chubb and Swift and Sony Michelle, those running backs are the truth. You're going to have to have eight men in the box at all times. You're going to have to have great run fits. You're going to have to have great linebacker play. And you're going to have to have Devontae Lampkin and Neville Gallimore just eating up the middle, you know, against a team that's averaging 263 yards rushing per game. Like, that's that's how they win. Rodney's playing. Yes, Kellen, Rodney's playing. Am I nuts in thinking that it wasn't uh, as big an upset today? I, I can see why you would think that it doesn't feel that way on Kuno, but, like, pfft, I think it's huge. I think it's massive. Anytime you got a three next to your name and we have a, a nothing, a, you know, not, like a not ranked and or a 24, you know, that like it's huge. 
Sorry, RJ, defense going up shows like the against Bama I'm going to score on this defense. Uh, yeah, I got a video coming out later this week about that. But, like, the thing that I don't think UGA fans get about the Rose Bowl, and I'll get back to Trey Young in just a second, but is that the last time Kirby Smart saw an OU quarterback, he got dropped. He got dropped for 348 yards through the air and four TDs, okay? He got, he, he got mollywhopped, skull dragged. By Trevor friggin' Knight. All right? OU fans know who Trevor Knight is. And we know that Trevor Knight in the Sugar Bowl is not regular. But all of a sudden, you put an SEC defense in front of Trevor Knight. And he's a Heisman winner. Like, that should scare the heck out of Georgia fans. Because Trevor Knight is not, you know, I love you, Trevor. You're not half the quarterback Baker Mayfield is. You, you're just not, you know. Uh, you can run a great zone read. But the way that you carved up Kirby Smart... That should terrify UGA fans. That would not that wouldn't that would not sit well with me. That knowledge that the last time Kirby Smart saw OU, he got torched. He got torched with NFL first round draft picks in the secondary. Landon Collins was playing safety on that defense. All right? Same Landon Collins is up there in New York right now. So, I mean, it, we just we just stay eating SEC teams. Stay eating. You know, it should terrify you. That Mike Stoops gets just destroyed in the Big 12, but he's 4-1 against the SEC. That should terrify you. Why is he 4-1 against the SEC? Because you play an antiquated form of football. That's why. You know? Anyway, uh, back to, to, to Trey Young for just a minute. Is Trey Young better next Stephen Curry? Stephen Curry? Stephen. Uh, I think... I think he is. I think he is. I know people are going to say, like, apples and oranges, like, the, the gap between college basketball and the NBA is, is a, you know, it's it's not a gap. It's a canyon. It's a chasm. Stipulated, right? I'd say that any guy who's ready to jump to the uh, to the NBA uh, from college is probably trying to pick up two years. You know, you're trying to pick up, you're trying to pick up for two years of, 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 of progression. Because I think that every college player, Mark! Appreciate you, fam. Mark hit me again. That's what's up. That's what's up. Now, like, so any any player jumping to to the NBA is gonna have to play catch up. I don't think rookies should be treated as rookies for a season. You got to think of them for as two year projects at a minimum. And if they're big men, you got to go for even longer than that because just. I mean, the pace of the game, the footwork needed to play the game. We all we all know that big men develop slower than guards because the skill set is just different. But a guy like Trey Young has already got a shooter's touch. He already is just lethal with dropping dimes. And because he's such a great scorer, because as soon as he gets to your chest, he's getting to the rack. I mean, look, the, the most underrated part of Trey Young's game to me is quite honestly – that he gets to the line nine times a game in a 40-minute basketball game, all right? Not 48, 40. That's James Harden-esque, all right? Like, I, I sent a tweet, like, earlier this week. I was, like, turn on the TV, and then the announcer's like, James Harden to the foul line. Yeah, yeah, because he lives there. And Trey Young has that kind of skill set. And if that kind of skill set translates to the NBA, look out, fam. Like, look out. Because if you can get to the foul line, you can take players off the court. And if you can take players off the court, the rest of the court opens up. You know, nothing like having two fouls on LeBron James in the first quarter. Think how that would destroy the Cleveland Cavaliers. And I think Trey Young has that kind of skill set because he's lethal with that first step. That Euro step is awesome. You know, it's your birthday, Michael. Happy birthday. That's what's up. Says all he wants for his birthday is a national championship. I like it. Let me see. I saw Blinken came through here with a pretty good point. Blinken says Steph was the innovator. Young grew up modeling himself off the innovator. I think there's a very good chance. He can out Steph, Steph. Good point, right? Because I think that LeBron James came up the same way watching Michael Jordan. You know, Pe people forget that. Like, I know people want to compare Michael J uh, Michael Jordan. People want to compare LeBron James to Magic Johnson, but that's not the guy that he grew up trying to emulate. The guy he grew up trying to emulate was Michael Jordan. But then when he figured out in high school that he was better when he could distribute the ball and didn't have to be so selfish and that they still win, you know, you saw the next innovation of what I think Michael Jordan would have become if Michael Jordan wasn't allowed to be so selfish. Like, the best thing that happened to Michael Jordan was the triangle. The worst thing that happened to Michael Jordan was the triangle. Because, you know, Michael Jordan hates to pass and he loves to, sc uh, loves to score. Matter of fact, one of my favorite Michael Jordan stories is in The Jordan Rules by Sam Smith. And it goes like this. 
Okay, Phil Knight. Oh, Phil Knight. Phil Jackson said to Mike, Mike, I'm going to have to start sitting you in the fourth quarter because I want you fresh for the playoffs, which makes sense. Michael Jordan says, if I sit for the fourth quarter, I'm not going to win a scoring title. And Phil Jackson's like, yeah, that's how that works. You're going to be fresh to win an NBA title and not wasted winning a scoring title. And Michael Jordan says, okay, okay. And then, like, at noon, Michael Jordan starts getting lathered up, like, a full three hours before game time. <laughs> three, three hours. Three, four, four, four hours before shoot-around, right? Uh, and he shows up, and he gets 30 in the first half, and then goes up to Phil Jackson and says, you can sit me now. <laughs> like, Michael Jordan just did not pass, doesn't care to pass. But because Steph Curry has shown, and LeBron James has shown, that you get further in the NBA if you're a great distributor and a great scorer, you got guys like Trey Young coming up. You got guys that look at the three-point line and don't see it as, you know, the end of where they can shoot. They look at the half-court line and say, nah, I can shoot for beer. That's fine. You know, so Blink brings up a really good point about innovation and the way the game is played. And that's how I really look at football. You know, I say that schemes are a living, breathing thing. So, like, Mike Stoops' scheme looks great in 2000. Looks like trash! in 2017 because schemes breathe just like basketball breeds you know you're seeing a different kind of basketball player now let me see uh who else we got in here let me see pitzer says i'm an ou fan that lives in wichita so it was nice winning today since i got harassed by wichita state fate since i got harassed by wichita state fans all week man i'm happy for you matter of fact rock rock that jersey all week style on them that's what I do. When I go to Stillwater, I style on them every chance I get. Matter of fact, Oklahoma State apparently beat Florida State, which means that Oklahoma State did not win against Florida State in football. That's that's what I took from that. They finally won something that was not football. Pfft. Style on them. St style on everybody in Wichita. You know, continue to tell them that Wichita State is not a state and you checked. You know, <laughs> hand out L's. Yes, hand, hand you some L's out. Matter of fact, you ain't got to make flags. Just get you a Sharpie, raw and L on it, just hand it to Wichita State fans. Be like, take this. I'll bet they'll take it right off your hands, fam. I'll bet they'll take it right off your hands. Let me see who else we got in here. Uh, let me see. I'm working on the album, Andrew. I'm working on it. It's hard, man. It's hard. Let me see. Uh, Charles says, I might have missed this in the previous shows. Will Mark Andrews be going pro? Also, Mel Kuyper has Mayfield as number 13 in the first round of the mock draft. All right, so... Mark Andrews is a redshirt junior. He Yes, go. Get out of here. Leave. You won the Mackey Award. You're first team All-American. Go get your money. You're a first round pick. Go go get paid. Go get paid right now. And you know what? If he wanted to come back, I fire him and then tell him to go to the Pro Bowl. I don't want him back. I want him to go get paid. You know? Uh, same thing with Rodney Anderson. If he figures out that he can go get paid after they get their early round draft grades back, go. Go get paid, man. I expect Zeus to get paid. You know, I don't expect Zeus to be back. You know, I've already started thinking that Bray Walker's going to be battling for that left tackle position. Because so I'm, I'm just, I'm on, that's my train of thought on all of this. If a guy has an opportunity at any level, whether it be gymnastics or tennis or golf or football, to go get paid right away, go get paid right away. You know, like don't, no nah, man, you can pay for an education. We'll be here. We'll, Roy Williams did it. Roy Williams just graduated from college this weekend. You know, shout out to Roy for going back and doing that thing because it meant so much to his mama. But he left early. Went had a great NFL career. Went, got paid, came back, got his degree. You know, we're not saying that degrees don't matter. We're not saying that you don't, shouldn't go get a college diploma, especially if it has some intrinsic value to you. But you're only going to have this body with this skill set for this finite amount of time. So use it and use it wisely. Don't waste it. You know, go get your money. Go get your money. Uh, let me see. T Oni Kuno says, your mascot is a fire hazard. <laughs> He's referring to Wichita State and the Shockers. That's funny. That That's funny. I like that. KC, what's up? I hit your email back. Let me see. Uh, what else we got? Uh, who else is in here? Let's see. Just another reason to switch the note to eight. Yep, good call. What else we got? What about Lamb? Yeah, so C.D. Lamb's fine. He just he just didn't get that many touches last time out. He's fine. He's he's a freshman. You know, he he doesn't have a choice. He has to come back because of the NFL's rules. NFL rules say, you know, three years of college, and then you can declare for the draft. 
they they built in a minor league system that way, so it, it just it just works. Uh, let me see, what else we got here? More questions, more thoughts. I'm scrolling up through the chat, so if you got them, drop them. We even own the SEC in softball. 2013, we beat Tennessee for a national title. 2016 against Auburn, and 2017 against Florida. He's he's not wrong. He's not wrong. Uh, and to think our best wide best wide receiver was out this year. That's right. Nick Basqueen was supposed to be our number one. It's funny how I haven't said Nick Basqueen's name at all this season. This is the first time I've actually said Nick Basqueen's name this year. Oh, hello from Brazil. That's what's up, Jonathan. That's what's up. Derek, I see you. You got here, fam. I see you. That's what's up. Brazil. That's what's up. Cecil be chiming in from, from Asia, man. I hope, Cecil's, I hope Cecil's asleep. Uh, hear anything about the young guns in practice? Nothing of late. Nothing except guys are getting healthy. You know, guys like Levi Draper are getting healthy. Uh, let me see. Blinken got another note. Trey Young is the first player with 25 points and 10 assists. Yeah, he said that. Okay, I see it. Flynn needed six overtimes to do it. That's, that's also the thing. Johnny Flynn needed six overtimes to do what Trey Young did in four minutes. He's... I mean, it's beyond special at this point, right? It's it's once it's once in a lifetime. We said that about Blake Griffin, remember? We said that about Blake Griffin. Blake Griffin, once in a lifetime talent, and all of a sudden, in the span of 11 years, we've seen it. a possible Naismith Award winner in Trey Young and a Naismith Award winner in Blake Griffin. Uh, how do you think TJ Pledger is going to do? So, Onikuno, I think you asked me that. No, JT asked me that. Signing day is Wednesday. Yeah, that's going to be a big day. Uh, I got I got some thoughts and plans that I'm not ready to share just yet about signing day, but I've been thinking about it. TJ Pledger's going to be good. TJ Pledger is the kind of space back that we like at OU. You know, he's built for an air raid. He's shifty. He's small. He wants to get linebackers one-on-one -on -one against him because he'll win. You know, uh, he'll be a great asset for in the passing game. You know, I'm thinking of all the bubble screens and all the, the, the quick releases to that kid. You know, he's going to be fun to watch. And if he can help us bring in Bookie, that's, Bookie's who I want, man, <laughs> I want Bookie, I want Bookie Radley Isles to look at OU and say, this is the place for me, now he's going to announce, you know, during uh, U.S. Army, but Bookie, Bookie might be 5'8", 155, but Bookie's built for a spread offense, like, he's built to defend it, like, I, like, I look at him, and I see Neon Dion. He does not like it when we, he takes it as a personal insult the quarterbacks throw to his side. But he's not the most athletic guy. He's not the fastest guy. You know, he doesn't, he's not, doesn't have the size. But every time I see Bookie on the field, Bookie is the hustle. He's hustle and pure speed, and he's got great ball skills. All right? Bookie could be a shutdown corner. You know, he would have to probably be a little bit bigger, grow a few inches. But Bookie's a ball hawk. Straight ball hawk, and he's got magnificent hair. Magnificent hair. Let me see. Uh, what else we got? Yup, gotta watch his tape. Yup, yup. Uh, let me see. Brent Keller. Da, da, da. Let me see. Boogie should want to come. I don't know, man. I want White and Bobby and Trey Brown. Yeah, yeah. I, I want them too. I want them too. I want. I want O'Neal too. Uh, Leon O'Neal, four star safety, who backed out of uh, Texas A&M after Sumlin left. What's up, Steel? Uh, so I, I want him. I want him bad. You know, I, I, I want to fortify the secondary, you know, because Brian Osamoa, he's going to come in. He's going to be a great replacement for Emmanuel Beal. Uh, he's actually going to be a little bit more athletic. Brian Osamoa can play both ways. You know, he can uh, he, he's played some running back. He's actually more of what I would like to think of as like a nickel safety, you know, with his skill set, with his ball skills, with his shiftiness. He's not the biggest guy, but I – I just want to fortify that secondary, you know, because that's how we get beat. You know, we get beat primarily with air raid. We don't get run on. It's just that's just not who we play. And all the time when, when teams want to try to run on us, they go away from it. See the SEC. Tennessee tried to run on us. Didn't work. Had to go to the pass. Alabama tried to run on us. Didn't work. Had to go to the pass. You know, uh, let me see. Somebody said never mind that with Booker T. Who else we got? Who else in the chat? What else we got? Uh, best part about Lamb is he's a freshman. The worst part is he's a freshman. Yeah, <laughs> Mark. <laughs> Mark with the half glass full, uh, uh, glass half full, glass half empty.
Bray Walker devours worlds like Galactus. It's why he's so big. That's Onikuno. So, I really just would like to get a picture with, with Bray Walker where he's standing next to me because I'm 5'5 five five and Bray Walker's 6'6", six 320. Six, That'd be funny. Uh... Uh, well, Derek Henry kind of run on us. I look, man. I'm not prepared to say that because I kept hearing about how Derek Henry was going to rush for 200 yards in the Sugar Bowl. Miss me with that. Derek Henry didn't do jack. He didn't do jack. Where is just where? What? What? Hold on. I missed that. Went by too fast. Uh, what about Lamb? We get a lot about Lamb. The guy that I think folks need to start talking about more often, honestly, is Grant Calcaterra. That's who you that's who you need to start talking about. Because I think that's that's gonna be Kyler Murray's best friend next year, is Grant Calcaterra. You know? Uh and he's already shown that he doesn't have a pucker factor. He's alright. I want him to get bigger, but then again, I want them all to get bigger. You know, I want them all to get bigger. I want them all to get stronger. I want them all to get faster. They're 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 young. They're mostly freshmen, you know, who are showing out. So Schmitty, get to work on this kid. We need him to put on about twenty pounds. Uh, about 20 pounds of rock, just like they did. Whoa! Pete! Uh, appreciate that, fam. Uh, what do I think of next year's quarterback? Um, I think it's going to be Kyler Murray. Uh, actually, uh, what's up, Sheldon? Uh, I, I think it's going to be Kyler Murray. Not only I think it's going to be Kyler Murray, I got a video coming out next week about 2018 Heisman candidates and sleepers. Kyler Murray is one of the sleepers, you know, but also... People kind of get upset when I say this, Pete, but Kyler Murray's got a higher completion percentage than Baker Mayfield. You know, Kyler Murray's completed 85% of his passes. Now, again, he's only had 21 attempts and Baker Mayfield's had like 9,000. Uh, but Kyler Murray could be a monster if they use him correctly. What's up, Jerry? Uh, I'm really excited about him. I, I really, I've been excited about him since high school, to be fair, because it's not just that he's fast. It's that people forget how accurate he is. You know, they forget that. They forget how accurate he is. He's a great passer. And if you run zone read with him, like you did against West Virginia, he can also smash you for 66 yards. But he's so underrated as a passer because of his height and because his his feet, his feet at the quarterback position are overwhelming. Um, I think Austin Kendall's got a shot because, well, Lincoln Riley's going to give everybody a shot. I think Tanner Mordecai's going to have a shot. Because Lincoln Riley's going to give everybody a shot. But there's nothing that I have seen that would lead me to believe anybody other than Kyler Murray is going to be the 2018 starting quarterback. Which means we need to come up with a nickname for him. I think, I've been thinking Kyler Flurry Murray. Just call him the Flurry. What do y'all think? Uh, I like I like the Flurry, but I'm, I'm open. I'm open. And whatever we decide on, uh, you know, we'll make it a shirt. Ooh, John! Yes, sir! Thank you! you like i just decided i would like this is awesome this is awesome i appreciate y'all man man pete just dropping the 50 spot that's that's what's up jackie got in here <laughs> jackie got in here and says hey rj i love you hit me with the super chat you know like mark hit me twice jared hit me like it's just this is awesome like y'all are y'all are great i really love doing this so i'm glad that y'all enjoyed enough to to give me your money like that's not a small thing to me it will never be a small thing to me um heber for life Heber for life. Uh, let me see. Tanner sitting for one year behind Murray would be great. Look, I have to say that about every quarterback ever. I just blurry is good. I like blurry. Blurry is good. Uh, I I say that about every quarterback ever. But if Lincoln Riley says that Tanner Mordecai is the best quarterback for the 2018 Sooners, I'm not going to question Lincoln Riley. <laughs> Lincoln Riley knows more about this, this offense than I do. You know, now defense, I'll, I'll take Mike's job tomorrow if they offer it to me. Just like that, Mike. It's like that. I will take your job tomorrow. What do you think about Spencer Rattler? I think Spencer's low key. He's low key one of my. He's my favorite 2019 recruit right now. You know, just because I saw Spencer. I saw Spencer dunk on a dude in a high school game at his height. Like I just saw him rise up and slam it down with one hand. I'm not used to quarterbacks doing that. Okay. I'm used to running backs doing it, wide receivers doing it, corners doing it, linebackers even doing it. I'm even used to the odd linemen doing it. I'm not used to seeing quarterbacks that can play basketball. I'm just not used to it. You know, baseball, sure. Kyler Murray, Archie Bradley, Cody Thomas, but not basketball. So, like, I saw that. I said, shake a leg, shake a leg. Like, Spencer, my goodness. 
If OU builds a big lead, how much time does Murray play and does Link pour it on to send a message? No. If OU builds a big lead, yes, Kyler Murray plays because it means that you're trying to save Baker Mayfield for the Nash Championship. But Lincoln Riley has shown if he's got a big lead, he's going to be conservative and run out the clock and secure the W. He's not going to get flashy and he's not going to do the old ball coach or running it up because you got a better op you got a better chance of getting guys hurt if you do that. And Lincoln Riley is not about running it up. He's about winning. And I can respect that. I would respect that all day long. You know, you get W's for me, you can do whatever you want. <laughs> you, you get W's, you can do whatever you want, fam. Whatever you want. Uh, let me see. Sam, what's good? 2019 looks off the chain so far. Yes, it does, Bill. It certainly does. Uh, all right, Blink. Deuces. Matter of fact, we're getting toward the end of this live stream. I, believe it or not, I was only expecting to go for like a half an hour for this. I heard Mike Stoops may step down after this season. Not likely, fam. Not likely. Not, not, not likely. I'd love it to be true, but it's not likely. You get paid $920,000 a year to get carried by a number one offense in college football. You don't leave as a defensive coordinator when that's happening. I don't care who you are. All right? Well, let's do roll call right quick so I can get everybody back out of here so they can go get dinner. Uh, who's replacing Dimitri Flowers? Hopefully Ricky DeBerry. Otherwise, all is lost. Goodness. Go search the Ricky DeBerry linebacker video. What's up, Rachel? I can't with Ricky DeBerry right now. We need two defensive coordinators. Yeah, me and Mike. And then send Mike out to get nachos. So if you're in the chat, say what's up. We're about to clean it up. Rachel with the basketball and the football. I like it. Uh, let me see. JT, what's good? Mark! What's up, deuces? Jackie! Deuces! Steel, what's good? Bill, what's good? Jared! Brent! What's up? See. Jeffrey, what's good? Richard, what's up? Like it. Like it. All right, Steel. Deuces. Tristan, I'll see you. Moreland, I like it. Moreland, Oklahoma. Sam, what's up? Austin, I'll see you. Anybody else in here? Anybody else saying hi? All right, that's going to do it. Remember, if you like the videos, like and subscribe. I upload a video every single day. It's always OU-related, college football-related, sports-related. It was basketball-related because OU got a big W against the number three team in the country, Wichita State. I'll see you tomorrow. Deuces.